Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is 15 metrics for healthcare companies. Now, this comes from a gentleman by the name of Phil Fisher and he wrote a book called Common Stocks and Uncommon Profits. And shoot, I'll get it right now. Here's the book. It's a fantastic book. I highly encourage you to read it. Now, this book is about investing and Phil Fisher was one of the most influential investors of the 20th century. In fact, Warren Buffett said that like 15% of his investing strategy came from Phil Fisher and then the other 85% came from Ben Graham. And in terms of bottom-up investing, in terms of investigating companies and then investigating him, like Phil Fisher was hugely successful at this. Now, he used a technique that's referred to as scuttlebutt investing. What does that mean? That means, again, that he did bottom-up investing and he essentially worked as like a, almost like a private investigator when he was investigating companies. I mean, he would literally stand in front of the front door of the headquarters of the company and like talk to the employees on their way in. Be like, hey, how are you doing? Because he wanted to gauge how the management was doing at the company. And by applying these 15 metrics to the company, he decided if he would invest in them or not. And this is important for healthcare companies because healthcare companies, especially healthcare companies that are forces for change in terms of higher quality, lower cost, increased access to care, like the organizations that are going to bring about that change in healthcare also have to have these 15 qualities. So let's go through them now. One, it needs to be a sizable market. So you don't necessarily want to be in the healthcare market of just like cotton swabs. Maybe cotton swabs is not a sizable market. Now, healthcare is so big that even if you have a niche within the $3 trillion healthcare market, it's probably going to be a sizable market. Point number two, determination to create new products. Well, obviously, if it's a startup, then its, its foundation is a new product. And that's the key, is that it's, it's new and that it's ongoing in creating new products. And of course, probably the number one example of creating new products is obviously Amazon, because it's always trying to create new things, with probably Amazon Web Services and its cloud computing being the most successful recent iteration of that. But it had its failures too, right? It had the Fire Phone. Right? And nobody buys an Amazon cell phone, right? So the but the point is, is that there is determination to constantly work on the creation of new products. Next up, that they're able to actually execute on the R&D, on the research and development. You know, in today's parlance, we would call it actually be able to execute on the, on the innovation, right? And so, you know, one might argue that companies like, you know, Microsoft have had a really hard time executing around innovation. I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying that. But, you know, maybe they're doing better now than they used to, but right? But that's where, you know, it's super important that the company, the healthcare company, is able to actually be successful in its research and development. Next up, aha, it has to have a great sales organization. You can't just have great products. You can't just have great innovation. You have to have a great sales organization. I'm gonna say that one word, one more time, sales. Next up, it has to have a worthwhile profit margin. In other words, it has to be a going concern. It has to be financially sustainable. If the company doesn't make any money, then how is it going to stay in business? And I would argue even for nonprofit organizations, the point is it needs to be financially viable. Okay, and this is where some nonprofit hospitals have said, look, our source of profit margin is going to be charitable donations, and we're just going to go after big donors, and that's their sort of strategy. But the point is, is that in healthcare, if it's a for-profit entity, that's fine. There's many for-profit entities in healthcare that can work towards higher quality, lower cost, increased patient access. But even if you're a not-for-profit company or organization in healthcare, the point is, can you be financially viable? Makes sense. Next up, can you improve your profit margin? In other words, can you become more financially viable over time? 
And again, obviously that applies to for-profit companies, but it also applies to the not-for-profit companies as well. And I'll even say, look, for hospitals, that might even mean like changing your business model such that you start a Medicare Advantage plan or actually start taking on risk. And so the actual amount of care that you deliver might actually be less for the sake of improving your margin. Okay, so it doesn't have to conflict with higher quality, lower cost, increased access to care. It doesn't have to. Okay, next up great labor relations. In other words, the employees have to be good teammates with management and the employees have to be good teammates with each other. There is no way an organization can be successful if they do not have good teamwork. Next up, great executive relations. So let's say the employees get along great but if there is a squabble at the top, if the top executives cannot get along and function as a cohesive team, then it will not work. And you know, I just have to say, fantastic example, there's like the Dallas Cowboys. I won't go any further than that. Okay, next up, the management has to have depth. Listen, executives are gonna leave. Executives are gonna retire. Sometimes executives have health problems. And there has to be a depth of management in order to replace those both. Folks, if it's thin, then obviously we have seen huge companies, dare I say, like GE, where they just didn't have the depth of management. And when Jack Welch left, like, you see what happened. Okay, next up. They have to have cost and accounting controls. If you can't keep ca track of the cash, and if you don't have an effective measure for controlling your costs, then you're not going to be a successful company. And this, you know, this is a prime example with hospitals where they don't do cost accounting, right? So here you have a major point of cost control where essentially there's a huge room for improvement. And I've talked about this in previous A Healthcare Z videos. There's huge, huge room for improvement on the hospital side, but that goes for any healthcare business. Next up, specific industry quirks. Okay, now this is kind of a hard one to explain, but he says like in, Phil Fisher says like in retail, actually negotiating good leases for your retail space is incredibly important for the success of your retail company. Um, likewise, I would say in, and that's kind of a quirk to retail, in other businesses, you know, the negotiating your, your space uh, and your lease might not be that, that big of a deal. But in retail, especially at his time in the 20th century, it was a huge deal. So in healthcare, I would say one of the, the quirks about healthcare that's really important is that your organization is actually able to successfully achieve some degree of behavior change in your customer. Because if we're dealing with higher quality, lower cost, increased access to care, then that almost de facto requires some degree of change by people's behavior. And let me give you a couple examples. So one, Teladoc, they were the first ones to actually get people to see a doctor over the phone. And you could say if it was high value or low value, whatever. I mean, but the point is, no one really did it before Teladoc. And they were able to successfully get people to change their behavior and monetize it. Next, Definity Healthcare. They essentially invented the consumer directed health plan like back in 2000 2004 and then Definity was bought by United Health Group and essentially became the CDHP solution and so here you can say well the employees really didn't change their behavior with the HSAs and the copays going away okay listen that's a whole other video for another day but you know what they did do they changed the behavior of employers in terms of buying health plans that were not copay based PPOs they convinced HR and CFOs and CEOs to change their behavior to actually buy a health insurance product that did not have copays. And they were successful in that. And that caught, you know, and over 30% of Americans through their employer now have some sort of consumer drug health plan. So you can argue about the pros and the cons of CDHPs, but Definity got people to change their behavior and were hugely successful as a result of that. Okay, next up. Do they have long range profit goals? In other words, do those long-range profit goals, do they supersede these short-term, short-range profit goals? And again, Amazon is the prime example of this, where they were not profitable for like over a decade, right? And they, because they knew long-term that they were using that lack of prof profitability to grow in size and scope and then become hugely uh, uh, cash flow positive over time. 
Okay. Likewise, if you're going only for short-term profitability for the sake of the organization, that, in Phil Fisher's mind, is not the right strategy. You have to look at long-term profitability. Next up. Um, is the organization going to require equity financing in order to grow? And the point here, especially from an investor standpoint, is that your ownership or your shares are going to be diluted if they keep having to issue more shares in order to grow. So in other words, you want to be an investor in an organization that actually does not require a lot of equity financing, okay? And this is important for startups, right? Because startups, to, you know, in this day and age, they end up selling equity like crazy. And the point is, is that, is that really the right strategy to use? Again, I'm not here to debate that. I'm just saying for what Phil Fisher was saying as an investor, like if you're an investor, you don't want to be diluted. Okay, next up. The management needs to be transparent when there's trouble. They need to be transparent with their investors. They need to be transparent with their employees. All businesses have problems. All businesses have problems. The point is, is that those problems are much more effectively solved when the executives are transparent about those problems, right? It's not the crime, it's the cover-up. So to the extent that the organization does not cover things up, they are actually much more likely to be successful. Next, and finally, the management has to have uncompromising, is the word that Phil Fisher used, integrity. And we're in healthcare, and we're working to improve quality, lower cost, and improve access to care. That is the most important thing, and save for the end. Now, this holds true for startups. It's not just for investors. So if you are running a startup or thinking about um, working at a startup or do work at a startup, like I would evaluate your startup in terms of these 15 things. If you are looking for a job, you are investing more than money. You're investing your time and your life. So arguably, when you're looking for a job, like it might be helpful in healthcare to look at these 15 things for the companies where you're interviewing to see which one might actually be uh, the best option for you for employment. So I just wanted to share this framework. Phil Fisher's incredible guy. Please go out and get his book. It's fantastic. And thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.